And so here is a graph of data um, that reflects the CO2 concentrations shown on the um, left axis and the global average temperature shown on the right axis in blue. And so you can see that there are fluctuations in temperature through time, but overall the trend is that they are increasing. And so many students see this graph and they're somewhat convinced that global temperatures um, have been increasing at least since the um, early 1900s. And so I often get questions of why in the world are global temperatures bouncing around up and down, whereas it looks like from this graph that the atmospheric CO2 shown in the red line seem to be pretty steady. And is that really an accurate reflection of what's going on? And so if we were to zoom in on one of these decades and just look on an annual basis at CO2 levels, we can see that it actually is fluctuating. And so the red line here represents kind of the um, uh, actual measurements from each of these time periods in the black represents kind of represents overall averages across the time period to kind of flatten out those those seasonal um, uh, fluctuations. But we can really focus in on the seasonal fluctuations and kind of reflect on what we've already learned this semester um, about what actually happens and, and how CO2 can fluctuate through time. And so specifically, if we look at the last time increment um, that is shown here, this is about February in 2016, and it goes back about six months, and we can clearly see that we have this real increase in CO2. And what we know, of course, about what's happening with organisms is that they're actually doing cellular respiration all the time. And specifically, this corresponds in the Northern Hemisphere to our winter months. And so we know that all the trees um, have lost their leaves and most of their photosynthetic surfaces. And so photosynthesis is really not actually actively happening, or in some cases, if the plants are dormant, it's not happening much at all, or maybe slightly um, in some parts. And so you don't have a whole lot of photosynthesis, so in this case, you actually are evolving lots and lots of CO2 through the process of cellular respiration. Whereas if you go back even further to this time period right here, these are the summer months that we're actually experiencing in the Northern Hemisphere. And we know that during the summer months, the, the plants are gonna leaf out and they're gonna have all these photosynthetic surfaces. They're gonna do a whole lot of photosynthesis, which of course needs carbon dioxide, so it actually depletes the um, global concentrations, which is why we see this cycling, these seasons cycles. But regardless of the seasonal cycles, we still see this general increase over time. And so this is the recent path. If we then say, well, let's go back a little further and see what we actually see if we go back in time. And so we're going to kind of go more into the distant past. And this is kind of about the past um, a thousand years of history. And this, if you maybe have heard of it, this is often kind of um, fondly called the hockey stick graph because of the shape um, of the relationship that we see here. And so what we have is over on the right hand side we can kind of see this blue trend um, kind of um, surrounded by these red error bars if you will and those represent actual measurements um, that were um, we were able to take in more recent history. And then back beyond that you can kind of see this purple line with the black and the yellow surrounding it, these error around that and those actually represent reconstructions from tree cores. And so we're able to take some data from tree cores to kind of understand what growing to conditions and, and therefore what temperature levels were like at that, that time kind of way back in history. And so based on these data, we can kind of make some general estimates and kind of understand that, if you will, that um, we're going to be seeing some different patterns. And it's also important to kind of bring up what this particular um, axis is over here because um, most of the graphs that we often see with temperature is looking at raw temperature values. And in this case, we're looking at a temperature anomaly. So in essence, we actually looked at the um, kind of mean temperature values between 1902 and 1980, and that kind of represented what our mean was. And so that's what zero is in this kind of dashed line across the middle. And so if you have for any given year a value that's lower than that average, it's actually going to be in this kind of lower region down here. If you have some temperature that's actually above that average, it's actually going to be up here. And so the trend you can see is that kind of going back into <clears throat> a thousand years, we can see that temperatures overall declined and they were overall colder than that average 1902 to 1980 period. Until about this point in history, which of course hopefully many of you know or recognize, corresponded to the Industrial Revolution. And so we can kind of understand that there was a lot of interesting events that actually occurred in there and that's when we started as humans to combust um, fossil fuels and of course increasing the fossil fuels in the atmosphere. Um, these are greenhouse gases and they can trap more heat, which of course is why we tended to see this spike, this real dramatic increase 
in temperatures um, through time, and we actually got significantly higher than the anomaly or that average between 1902 and 1980. And so, in essence, we can kind of look at the distant past and say, well, you know, if we go before the Industrial Revolution, um, then we kind of saw that temperatures were declining. But since the Industrial Revolution and beyond, it, it looks like this projected continuation. And so that's kind of um, looking at the distant past. And of course, we can kind of go back even further than that um, um, into kind of more of the geologic time scale and understand what happens if we look at millions of years in the past, which is what we're looking at here. And again, we're kind of thinking in terms of um, a raw temperature scale, which we see over here. Kind of remember that kind of the average um, temperature that we can kind of think about um, is about 20 degrees, about 68 degrees Fahrenheit is 20 degrees C. It kind of gives you some context. Um, and it's often uh, difficult to kind of think in terms of millions of years. So another um, thing to context is to kind of think in terms of, well, we kind of believe that the, the age of the Earth is about, or the, the Earth formed about 5.4 billion years ago, and that the first hominid was only about six and a half million years ago. So we're kind of way over here, just this little tiny blip on this um, millions of years geologic time scale. And so we can kind of see then is this trend um, in temperatures through time. And you can see that there's highs and there's lows and, and things are really, really varying over time. Um, but the real crux is, is that even us that's kind of way down here and we have this understanding that we're kind of somewhat um, at around this temperature, um, suggesting that NOAA kind of cites the average annual temperature, at least for 2014, was about 14.6 degrees C, is we're actually well below um, some of the temperatures that our planet has seen in past history. You can clearly see there's been times over history that, that, that our Earth has been significantly warmer or significantly colder than it is right now. And so the real question is, why is all this fuss? Why are all these people kind of screaming and pulling their hair about, about the fact that temperatures are increasing? Why are we focused on that? Well, we're kind of focused on that because of the fact as we're looking specifically at the rate of these changes. We know that yes, indeed, temperatures have been higher in the history of the Earth, but the rate of change is drastically different. So we can kind of see that in some cases, this change in temperature we can see here may seem very, very dramatic, but it was occurring over millions and millions of years. Whereas now, in kind of the recent past, we'll have a, a change in temperature of about one and a half to two degrees Celsius, and that occurs in just a hundred years. And so we're not talking at all at the same kind of scale of things.